Welcome to High Plains Western Heritage Center. Opened in September of 1989, the center provides more than 20,000 square feet of presentation space, honoring Western legends and pioneers whose rugged individualism created the unique landscape and economies of this five-state region. The center had its origins in the 1950s as the first possible home for the National Cowboy Hall of Fame. That facility, inspired by the plans for this building, was eventually built in Oklahoma City. But work went forward in Spearfish, led by the efforts of State Representative Edgar Gardner and Western South Dakota rancher Harry Blair. With true pioneer spirit, individuals and organizations joined forces in fundraising and finally in September of 1977, the ground was broken for the High Plains Western Heritage Center. Today, the center welcomes thousands of visitors each year to come and learn the stories and the legacy of our unique American Western heritage. The center is comprised of the main level, an upper level, and the grounds. This room is the Bruce Miller Theater. Its stage hosts Western entertainment and historical presentations. On the wall behind you, You'll find a large and extremely rare 40-star American flag, one of fewer than 12 known to exist. South Dakota was the 40th state. As you exit the theater, in front of you is the Founders Room. Waiting to greet you is a sculpture of the country's most famous cattle trail boss, James Tennessee Vaughn, the first to move Longhorn cattle from Texas to greener pastures in Dakota Territory. It took Wyoming sculptor Gary Shoup almost as long to complete the 17-foot-tall masterpiece as it took Vaughn to move his cattle, more than three months. This room celebrates the achievements of these trail bosses, monument makers, and our founders. In the main hall, be sure to have your picture taken while seated in our 1902 Studebaker carriage. It's a real Surrey with fringe on top. Or step into a photo with our life-size bison. They were indigenous to our region. In the cowboy hall is actor Tom Selleck's saddle, life-size longhorns, and the story of the cowboys of 1902 who led the country's largest cattle drive from right here in South Dakota. Rodeo is South Dakota's official state sport. In the rodeo room, you'll find actual saddles and buckles won by world champions. Spearfish is home to two of them, Clint Johnson and Kurt Mankey. In fact, the live steers you see in our front pasture are loaned to us every summer by Kurt. Here you can read the story of Cowboy Hall of Fame Buffalo rider Jerry Olson. And even the horses are remembered, like South Dakota's Tipperary, the world's toughest horse to ride. Find out if anyone actually did. In the Custer Hall, you'll see artifacts and photos of General George Armstrong Custer's Black Hills Expedition in 1874. Here, you will also find the 1878 Congressional Medal of Honor, awarded to area resident Private Peter Thompson, one of only two surviving members of Custer's Company C at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. In the early Pioneers Room, some of the center's most important stories are told. You will see how mining, forestry, tourism, and agriculture were and still are pillars of the High Plains economy. A highlight of the transportation room is the actual Spearfish to Deadwood Concord Stagecoach, one of the last in the U.S. still in use for fare-paying passengers as late as 1913. On the upper level in the Pioneer Room is a sheep wagon, the first RV. From 40 below to sweltering heat, it was a middle-of-nowhere tiny house for sheep herders year-round. It was a solitary life that gave birth to the West's most unusual art forms, the Stone Johnny. This region was the nation's leader in wool production, and this century-old weaver's loom turned some of that wool into clothing, blankets, and rugs. Browse the Pioneer Kitchen, which no doubt will bring back memories and challenge us to figure out what some of these gadgets were used for. This is what modern looked like 120 years ago. In the Writer's Gallery, you will find one of the country's largest private collections of spurs. Frank Troxell's work was even honored by President Reagan. On the other side is the unique story of female trick writers Rosemary and Fidelia Tope. 
On occasion, Rosemary herself is on hand to tell her story in person. Stepping into the Frontier Room is a step back in time. Main Street in the 1890s with a blacksmith shop, saddle maker, Pony Express station, newspaper office, and saloon. The upper level balcony features a dramatic three state view. In the distance is Montana and Wyoming. Also on the balcony is Native American artwork and artifacts. On the grounds is the actual Crow Creek Schoolhouse. Peek inside and imagine what it was like to attend a one-room school more than 100 years ago. You are also welcome to walk among our antique farm implements behind the center as well. Throughout the building, look for volunteers in red vests, ready to answer your questions. And be sure to visit our gift shop to find a wide selection of books, reproduction prints, Western souvenirs, including handmade Native American gifts and jewelry. We hope you enjoy your visit today to the High Plains Western Heritage Center. My, how time flies. <laughs>